Good morning, everyone, Good morning. and welcome. There's a little uh, frost on the pumpkin this morning. A little cool out there, but what a place to be when it's cool outside. It's warm in here, amen? Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, next Saturday is our Mission Network Bake Sale at Honey's. Uh, anyone willing to bake some cookies or cupcakes or uh, cakes themselves or uh, pies, uh, bring them to Honey's or leave them here. Let somebody know you're leaving them here. We'll bring them up, pick them up on uh, late Friday afternoon or early Saturday morning and bring them out there. And if you can, take a drive out with 10 to Honey's and see all the people that are involved in Missional Network because that usually raises the network somewhere around fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars, and that money all goes to uh, the Rise Against Hunger effort that we do, which is coming up at the beginning of December. That's where we package ten thousand bags of food uh, that are sent off to needy places in the world, and we do that ten thousand bags of food, food in one hour. It's amazing. So, uh, I'll be drumming up business for that maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, but just keep that in mind. Uh, a week from Wednesday is our ecumenical Thanksgiving service at Sardis. Uh, Plateau's responsibility <coughs> is sandwiches. There is a sign up sheet out in the Narthex. If you're able to make sandwiches um, for that, great. Uh, if you can be there for the service, even better. And the last thing I had, uh, two weeks from today, we start the season of Advent, believe it or not. And this year's theme for uh, Advent is reflecting the sacred. And I really encourage uh, you all to to kind of be a part of that. Sometimes during the Christmas holidays we take our focus off other things and focus on our busyness and gifts and do making this and making that, but <clears throat> very seldom do we allow the time to reflect on God and on uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord and Savior. So, That'll be the focus for our series during Lent. Uh, we got some great plans in decorating the uh, sanctuary, so hopefully all of you can come and participate in that. Are there any other announcements? Yes, Barbara. Um, everybody needs to start thinking about the usher communion store right here. And if you don't come out, I'll put your name down. Did everybody hear that? Barbara's coming after you. If you want to be a reader, a communion server, usher, or a good doobie, children's message as well. You don't do that? Somebody else does that? Like maybe the pastor? So I'll come after you too. All right, please see Barbara if you're willing to come read scripture. It's a great opportunity, nothing to be afraid of. Scripture's up there for you, marked where you start, where you finish. Um, that way you're, you're part of the service and you uh, feel drawn in you closer to God. Any other? Yes, Sheila. I just wanted everyone to know, if you don't already, we're trying to uh, go through our membership. And uh, if you know anyone from church that has not been here in quite a while, please give them a call or write them a note or just tell them that we <coughs> miss them and we wish that they could come back and be in our congregation again. I think we have something like 170 members. Is that right? No. Uh, about 
211 members, and you see how many are here this morning. So there's a lots and lots of people that have come and gone. A lot of them have moved away. Some of them have passed away, but I think most of those we've, we've captured and removed from the list. But um, if you know somebody that hasn't been here in a while, give them a call. Let them know that we care. We'd love to have them here. Come on. Uh, <coughs> yes, please. I know it's in the public room for the U.S. that we meet tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. You? I the officers and our family. UMW is meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Any other announcements? Peter? Yes. There will be no prior, I mean, play practice this morning. And if you have not brought your uh, Christmas child box. Let me know when you're bringing it so I'll know when to pick them up to haul them up to Everett Chevrolet this week. So, everybody heard that there's no Christmas play practice today. And if you haven't had the opportunity to bring in your Operation Christmas Child box, uh, there's still time left, but just let Fred know or let the office know so we can coordinate getting the boxes uh, to the central collection point. Any other announcements? Well then, if you would please rise and join in our singing with our call to worship.
Now let us join together as we profess our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we typically do at this point in the service each Sunday morning, we collectively, as the body of Christ, share our joys and concerns and then lift them all up to God at once. So if you have a joy or a concern, allow the Spirit to overflow. Yes, Father. I want to thank you for having that lady from hospital yesterday. She was very helpful, and I think she helped Jan and myself very much. Yeah, if you, uh, sorry if you weren't able to make, make it yesterday, but we had a very good session with Annette Walker from Carolina Carey who shared about how we can survive the holidays and deal with the grief that comes along with that. <coughs> yes, Jen. Prayers for Carol's gluten. Mount <coughs> Grove Baptist. So Carol's uncle Jenny passed away be with their family as they grieved that loss and the service will be at Mount Grove Baptist Church next Sunday. Tony uh, McCormick son of law of Shell Black that goes to Ebenezer Methodist Church was very desperate. Uh, be with that family. Amy is his wife. Uh, he was 61 years of age. Chris, the McCormick family, as they grieve his loss. Michelle? Uh, joy and <coughs> prayers for travel mercies for my dad and my brother. They made it safely to Colorado. Their hunt has been successful so far, so <coughs> we're thankful for that. We don't have to listen to anybody applying for Christmas about a not successful hunt. Uh, but they'll be returning at the end of this week, so just prayers for safe return in Colorado. The so prayers for Van and Junior Proctor as they return from Colorado. Any other joys or concerns? <coughs> Let's pray. Most gracious, merciful, loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together this morning and to be in a, a warm place, uh, to sing your praises and just let your love flow amongst us, Lord. Lord, we lift up those names that we just shared, those that need healing, those that need protection and safety, those that uh, are in the process of grieving a loss. Lord, uh, be with each and every one of them, their families, give them comfort and peace during this time. Lord, we thank you for uh, this beautiful day, albeit a little cool outside, the leaves are flying off the trees, that means a lot of raking ahead. But Lord, that's just a gift uh, that we receive from you. The beauty has fallen off the trees. The trees are regenerating and will sprout again in the spring. So Lord, uh, just as the trees lose their leaves, let us lose all of our issues and concerns and troubles. And let us grow in new life uh, and spring forth in more love for you. Lord, we thank you uh, for all the ways you bless us, all the ways you 
send us and turn us and twist us. Lord, uh, it's all for your sake. It's all for your glory. As we conclude this time of prayer, we conclude it with the words that your son Jesus gave us. Words of assurance as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for our God. Amen. I invite our children and youth. to come forward for our youth message.
of those gift certificates you give to other people, the more that will come back to you. If you love others, they're going to love you. If you forgive others, they're going to forgive you. So use these gift certificates, the ones from your heart, as often as you can today and through this week and through your lives, okay? All right. Uh, we're going to pray, but after we pray, I want you just sit still because I have a little something to give you, okay? Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our church, our pastors. We thank you for these young people, Lord, and their families. And Father, we thank you for your gifts of love and forgiveness. That it enables us to love others, Father, as you have instructed us to do, and also to forgive others. And Lord, we pray these and all things in the name of your beautiful Son, Jesus the Christ. Now, Friday night, Kay and I got big dog gym. And I was thinking about doing this lesson about gifts to take these gift cards. So I said, well, I'll just, I'll just pick up some gift cards. So I have a gift card, it's not a lot of money. <laughs> but it's uh, one for each of you. And it's got this uh, it's cash to see on the back in case there's a question about it. Now, I made a mistake. I went up and grabbed a bunch of gift cards, a bunch, some of them. And I didn't notice until I got to the cash register when she would ring it up and it says, Happy birthday on there. So, this is for your belated birthday or for your future birthday. Or we can just say this is Happy Birthday Jesus next month, okay? So, uh, go and use these. And it's not a lot, but just a little early Christmas card for Pam, okay? Thank you.
And Lord, I ask that you bless these snacks that have been given. Allow them to uh, fall into the hands of those uh, that might need, uh, might need a little bit of encouragement. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary 
in doing what is right. Take note of those who do not obey what we say in this letter. Have nothing to do with them so that they may be ashamed. Do not regard them as enemies, but warn them as believers. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Come Holy Spirit, come in Jesus' precious name. Fill our hearts with your love. Let us resound with that love so that it might shed and spread to, to others that are desperate to have that love in their lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a story about two factory workers, Joe and Lester. And they were talking. And Joe said, I think I know how to get some time off from work. And Lester said, well, how do you think you'll do that? So Joe proceeded to climb up a ladder to the rafters of the factory and hang upside down by his knees. The boss walked in, saw Joe hanging from the ceiling, and asked him what on earth he was doing. I'm a light bulb, said Joe. I think you need some time off, said the boss. So Joe jumped down and walked out of the factory, and Lester started walking out the factory with him. And the boss asked him, where do you think you're going? Home, said Lester. I can't work in the dark. <laughs> I need to try that sometime. Now, if some people use as much creativity in their work as they're trying to get out of their work. The quality of work and productivity probably would just skyrocket. Well, the reason I share this story is that it would have been a whole lot easier to be like Joe and Lester and come up with some fancy excuse not to talk about the topic on our agenda today. You see, some people are scandalized whenever we use the S word and the F word in any church setting. What's going through your minds right now? Service and violence. <coughs> close. Very close. <laughs> Stewardship in finance. They aren't words that are heard very much. Neither of those words are heard very much from, from the pulpit nor uh, in, in movies and whatever. But now that your minds are straightened out and fixed on stewardship and finance, and no matter how much we explain which stewardship is all about, it really is about our heart and the lifestyle than the actual giving part of it. All some people here when we mention stewardship is money, money, money. A stewardship and finance is simply part of the work of the church. So remember what Margaret just read about, read to us. While Paul's talking directly about giving money in the scripture, he does talk about the responsibilities of every Christian. 
He tells all the folks at Thessalonica that they did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. Now, I don't want to make a big deal out of that, but that phrase, eating someone else's bread without paying for it, kind of stuck in me. And when we take advantage of the ministries of the church and expect the church to continue to do what they do without our support and our involvement, it's kind of the same as eating bread that we didn't pay for. Think about that for a minute. It's probably those folks who don't like to hear the S and the F word in church. Based on my experience, there are three different kinds of believers. The tit-for-tat believer, the common agreement believer, and the nonetheless believers. Let me explain what those three types are. The tit-for-tat believer follows God if they receive blessings and rewards in return. They wait. They stand back and they wait to see what God will do first. Then they'll decide whether or not to respond in obedience. Probably a good example from the Bible of a tit-for-tat believer is Jacob. A common agreement believer follows God because God blesses and rewards them. They've seen the connection between their obedience and God's blessing. And they want to keep that going. A good example of a common agreement believer in the Bible is King David. But there's a third type of believer and this is the nonetheless believer. Now, nonetheless, believer loves God no matter what the situation is, whether he or she receives any blessings or rewards in return. Now, Job, whose name is very familiar and synonymous with suffering, was a nonetheless type believer. Because a nonetheless believer loves God in spite of of the circumstances that they're in, and in spite of any hardships or struggles they might be facing. So I get to thinking about all that, and I realized that this analogy could be stretched to include stewardship as well. There are three kinds of givers, a tit for tat, a common agreement, or a non the less giver. The tit for tat give, gives only if he or she thinks they're going to receive a blessing or a reward in return. This person waits to see what God is going to do first, then decides whether or not to respond by giving. There is a perfect example of this in the movie Groundhog Day. How many of you have seen Groundhog Day? I don't know, I've probably 15, 20 times I've seen it. It took me about 15 or 20 times to figure it out. But Phil Connors is a very self-centered weather reporter, and he relives Groundhog Day in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, over and over and over again. And each day is exactly the same way it unfolds for others. But each day, Phil is given an opportunity to change himself, to adjust to those circumstances. And finally, he has come to know and love all those people, once the, the ones especially that he neglected or disdained. He knows every move. He's seen them go through those motions time and time again. Remember the scene? Hey, Phil! Phil? And then there's a big puddle, nice puddle. What he learns is that this divine like intervention that comes can be a thankless job. Have you ever thought about how much God? We take God for granted. 
Think about all the complex details that come together every day in our lives just to sustain our lives. Yet how often do we stop to thank God for all God has done for us? And when we do give thanks, we're finally realizing all that God's providence has done for us. And when we don't give thanks, we're just taking advantage of all that providence. Or it's like somebody eating someone else's bread that we didn't pay for. So we're being tit for tat Christians. Now the common agreement giver gives because God has blessed them and wants him to keep receiving those blessings. But that's probably, it's probably not the best theology for the, or the best reason. It's a good reason, though. And there's a scene in To Kill a Mockingbird that illustrates this side, this type of idea. A man, Mr. Cunningham, is seen taking up a burlap bag filled with nuts, and his wagon approaches the Finch house. A young girl runs up the stairs and calls out for her father. He appears on the steps. Good morning, Walter. Mr. Cunningham returns a greeting and says, I brought you these here hickory nuts as part of my deduction. Taking the nuts, Atticus Finch tells Cunningham, Well, I thank you. Those collard greens we had last week were absolutely delicious. Cunningham tips his hat and takes his leave. But then the young girl approaches her father and asks her father, why did that all happen? Why did he bring all that stuff? And her father, Atticus, replies, he's paying me for some legal work that I did for him. He wants to know why he pays, or she wants to know why he pays in hickory nuts. And Atticus tells her that's the only thing that he can afford because he has no money. Mr. Cunningham owes a debt and the only way he knows to pay it is with his meager gifts. Similarly, we all know but we can never, ever possibly repay God for our salvation. But we bring to God what we can and what we have. Sometimes our offerings might be poor and sometimes we're embarrassed to bring them at all. But we bring them in common agreement because we know God wants them and because we want to say, thank you, God, and because God has blessed us in so many different ways. But I wonder if we would quit giving or quit attending church on Sunday morning or just, just quit supporting God if God's quit His blessing on us. That's the danger of being only a common agreement Christian. And then there is the nonetheless Christian. Those who are just like good old Job. They have faith, they give, they attend, they support, they reach out, regardless of whether or not they like the preacher. Regardless of whether they agree with all the ministries of the church. Regardless of whether or not they use the S word and F word in the church. The nonetheless Christians stay involved regardless of whether or not they are blessed because they know that God is faithful no matter what the situation may be. So they in turn try their best to be just like God and remain faithful no matter what their situation might be. The nonetheless Christians give and participate and support and pray simply because they love God. They have experienced the unconditional 
love and faithfulness that God has for each and every one of us. And they want to share that love with others. And it doesn't make any difference whether life is good or life is tough. They love God and they know God is faithful in the midst of every situation that comes at them. What if we were all nonetheless type Christians? How would that change the world that we live in? I suppose it might be for the better. The good news is that God is God regardless of what we do or how we respond. Tit for tat, common agreement or nonetheless, it doesn't make any difference to God. We're all His children and He loves us all the same. Because God is God. And I hope you notice too that all these types of Christians are still Christians. And as our spiritual life and relationship with God grows, usually those tit-for-tat Christians eventually grow into the common agreement Christians. And typically, those common agreement Christians ultimately grow into being nonetheless Christians. But here's the important difference. God accepts you just the way you are. God may never ever leave you there in that situation, but God meets you there and loves you the way you are. No strings attached. And hopefully we as a church live and model that as well to others. Because you see, it takes all of us, all of us inclusively, Every single one of us. Because when we're individuals, we're weak. But together, we're unbreakable. Amen? You and I are just like a bundle of sticks. Individually, we can be broken. But when we are tied together as a big bundle, through the love of God in Christ, we're nearly unbreakable. It doesn't matter what kind of Christian or what kind of giver we are. Tit for tat, common agreement, nonetheless, as long as we're faithful and as long as we're all tied together to the bonds of our baptism and our salvation in Jesus Christ. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, that we can't face whether it's shortfalls in the budget or giving, whether it's cancer, whether it's disagreements about how things should be done, or maybe even disaffiliation. Whatever it is, we stick together. If we rely on God, if we all together become fuel for the fire, we can accomplish, accomplish whatever God puts before us. But give thanks to the Lord for him is good, his love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, it's interesting how you can take a look at a passage and you come up with something that we wouldn't even imagine come out of that, that passage. Yet, how true your word is and how important it is for us to study it each and every day. So Lord, whether we're tit for tat or common agreement or nonetheless type believers, as I said before, we're all God's children created in His image, Imago Dei. He loves each one of us, no matter who we are, what we are. 
He loves us. Take that to heart, friends. Because there's no one in this world that loves you more than God loves you. And that's something to never let go of. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise now as we sing our closing hymn.
which it did, not even expecting one single thing back. And you just keep giving, you just keep plugging because you love the Lord your God. That's what it's all about. What kind of Christian are you? Not about money, not about finance. God loves you regardless of your tit for tat, common agreement, or nonetheless. But for you to examine where you stand in those three different categories. So go and think about that. Be blessed with God's love, God's mercy, mercy, God's grace, God's forgiveness. Stay healthy, stay strong, always keep focused. Have a great week, everyone. God bless you.